A child on a ventilator requires 24-hour nursing care. They are totally nurse dependent, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. St. Joseph Home serves individuals um, who are uh, vent dependent in the pediatric ventilator unit um, that literally range from uh, roughly about six months of age all the way up to adolescence and teenage years and even into adulthood with us. When we started our ventilator unit, we really recognized the need in children who were living in the hospital for a long period of time, and we didn't think that that was really the right place for them to be living, and we wanted a more community-based and um, natural setting. When I walk into Cottage One, it's just like if you was to walk into a, a house with eight kids. <laughs> Um, you have eight different residents with eight different personalities. Andrew is like any other 11-year-old. He is very curious and he loves to ask questions and he loves to make friends. Miracle, he is a beautiful young man. He is very calm and quiet. He has a calming uh, effect on people here. I think when people first meet people that have a ventilator, they think, Oh, I can't touch this person. They're so medically frail. I have to be so careful. And I felt that way at first, too. And then, then you find out that, oh gosh, there's so much that they can do. Do we have different therapists that help identify what our residents can do in terms of gross motor, in terms of communication, what kinds of daily living that they can do, whether it's hand over hand or if they need um, full assist. So we really try to identify what skills they have and grow on that. If someone's able to hold a, a toothbrush, we'll try to encourage them to brush their teeth by themselves or with assistance. If someone's able to brush their hair, we'll do the same thing. Um, if someone can use hand over hand to feed themselves every day, we want to focus on that so that they can do things as independently as possible. First we hear the criteria or the diagnostics from the doctor and then we can say, oh, if there is vision, let's see what the vision is. So then we look and see if can they localize, can they attend to things, can they track? If not, can we build upon that? Do they have um, auditory abilities, tactile stimulation? We've had some that have started out tasting a few items, really, you know, very small tastes, and they've advanced to eating three meals a day. When we think about the care of children with on ventilators, it's a very collaborative approach. It requires a lot of integration across medical subspecialties like pulmonology, our care here with our uh, respiratory therapists, nursing care, and family involvement. A person get out of the bed is good for anyone, and a person on a ventilator is no different. It's good to move your muscles around, to be in a different position to prevent bed sores. A lot of our individuals have what we call spasticity, which is an increased muscle tension. And by getting them into a standing program, that's very helpful to relax some of that spasticity. That being said, I still have to work with the fact that this individual may be vent dependent. You have to have someone there to um, watch the vent, watch the cords and the plugs. Um, you have to have someone there to help lift and transfer. So it takes more to get a child out of the bed with a ventilator than someone else. It takes a team to do it. We require just an intense level of staff. I think that's something that really sets us apart, is the level of staff, and, and that is just expensive. And so one of the ways that we are able to utilize donor um, dollars is just by providing levels of staffing that are in some ways just not present in other uh, locations. It's so clear how much um, the staff care about residents and their families. Uh, it just comes through every day. I have seen tremendous growth since working with Cheyenne. We have worked as a team to help determine the best mode for her to access switches. I contacted this organization called May We Help and they built a car for her that's switch adapted and she got in that car and was like, all of a sudden she could activate the switch and just be able to go. And it's the coolest thing because it's like she's got this freedom where here's this kiddo who was basically in her bed or being transported to the hospital and back and forth. And then she got in this car and now she's got some abilities. And we're looking at the potential for her to um, have power. So powered mobility, a power wheelchair, um, based on her ability to activate the switch. 
Sophia is also a, a young child here who came to us af after being born prematurely and um, needed a ventilator for chronic lung issues. Sophia is the sweetest little girl. She has a big, beautiful smile. Um, she loves to be held. She loves one-on-one -on -one attention. What's been kind of exciting about Sophia's um, progress is one, seeing her able to be weaned from that ventilator in the daytime, um, and even just uh, her um, expansion of her personality and kind of being more smiley and interactive as she's gotten older. I think she had some issues with seizures that once that got under control, um, she just seemed to blossom and be a different kid. She has this Build-A-Bear toy that plays Moana when you click the foot. Um, she absolutely adores the soundtrack. She has a fantastic grip, which is amazing, and uh, she's getting really good at rolling side to side. Um, she'll be here a long time. I think her, her needs with her cerebral palsy and feeding issues uh, will require her to have su full support for her whole life. But um, again, I think being here allows her to go out into the community, be with um, other children, go to school, uh, and have those experiences that all children should have. St. Joseph Home, I didn't expect to make such an impact on me. You don't think of it as a facility as much as you think of it as a home. I think there is such compassion, such interest and care for each of the residents. I'm, I feel so privileged to work amongst so many staff that are dedicated, caring, compassionate to the work that they do and always putting the residents first. They are a person. Uh, they all have a name. Um, they all are living life and they deserve the best life that we can give, the best quality care that we can give. I look at them just like I look at my kids. Without you, St. Joseph Home wouldn't be able to give the depths of support our people need to live their most fulfilling, dignified lives. We need your support. Thank you for considering a gift that truly gives hope, freedom, and turns possibility into reality.